Hello everybody, David Hope here from Elastic and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about an APM problem that we're going to solve. So today we're talking about open telemetry and custom Java instrumentation. And why do I need to do custom Java instrumentation with open telemetry? Well, I might have an app, it could be a legacy app, could be a, uh, you know, a batch job or something like that, that, that isn't supported by open telemetry. Now, why wouldn't it be supported? Well, the way that APM works, especially with automatic instrumentation, is that when the JVM loads a class file, it is possible to tap into that loading mechanism and change the class file to add your own custom code. And that's essentially how APM works. With APM, what happens is, is that before your application starts to run, before the classes actually get loaded, what we do is, is we do some manipulation of that class file to add some code in to do performance monitoring. Now, the, the only way we can do that is if we already know about something about that class file, like maybe it's got a standard HTTP server framework that is being used. And if we know about that server framework, we can manipulate the class file in line with that. But if I have an application that's completely custom and we know nothing about it, then APM can't easily you know, figure out exactly how to monitor that piece of code. And so if you have something custom like that, you need to do a little bit more work. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So over here, I've got a simple application. It's a custom application I've written. And what it does is, is it's very simple. You start it up, enter a sentence, and it counts the number of words in that sentence. Now our APM agent certainly knows nothing about this application. It's completely custom. We're not using any standard libraries or frameworks that could be useful for APM. So what happens when I try to actually instrument that with uh, an APM agent using the open telemetry APM agent is as you can see here, we'll start uh, our application up with the open telemetry Java agent uh, to give you a little demonstration of what happens. So you can see it starts up, lots of open telemetry log messages come up. We enter in our sentence over here, hello world. Very simple. We've got a little um, sleep, as you will have noticed in the code here, just to force a long running transaction. So we have to wait a little bit for it to happen. And it says the input contains two words. Now, if we go to Elastic, where in fact we have pointed our um, open telemetry Java agent to, you'll see that the, the service does actually appear in Elastic. So we do get something, the service appears in here, but what's missing is there are no transactions, no transactions found. So we have no idea about the performance, for example, of the, the count words method. And what we'd like to be able to do is we'd like to be able to understand the performance of that, of that count words method. So how exactly do we go about doing that? Well, luckily, Open Telemetry, the Open Telemetry Java agent supports something called extensions, which means we can write a little plugin that goes into the Open Telemetry Java agent at runtime and gives us the ability to add instrumentation rules. And you can see here I've written an example here, Open Telemetry Custom Instrumentation in this GitHub repository. You can go and have a look at this and you can try this out. So I recommend go and do that. So let's have a little look at the code. So if we open a, a recent project, you can see you've got custom instrumentation for open telemetry. And there are really only two class files that are interesting here. We've got the instrumentation module, which does a bit of setup for us. We, we kind of give uh, in the instrumentation a name Essentially what's happening here is this instrumentation module allows us to define groups of instrumentation uh, configuration, right? So essentially what we're trying to do in this example is we just want to instrument the count words method so we can understand the performance of that method. 
but if we wanted to also instrument a couple of other things, we could do so and group them together if they had the same uh, the same uh, end goal, right? So, for example, if we were trying to instrument all of the HTTP servers that are out there, right? We might want to group those together, and then we can disable them together as well if we need to using Open Telemetry. So we can give our group of instrumentations a name here. We can define the order in which it's loaded. We can define classes that we want to use in when, when our instrumentation runs. We can define classes that we want to get injected into the class path of the application when it runs. And we define the name of the class that we're trying to instrument here too. So that kind of the instrumentation module is helping us set up and configure our instrumentation. And then the actual rules live in this word count instrumentation class, which implements type implementation instrumentation. So anything that implements type instrumentation is about instrumenting a specific class. So now we've got the main class that we had, which you would remember from the code we looked at earlier and the count words method. So these are the things, that's the method we want to understand the performance of. So when that method runs, that count words method runs, we can then see some code here that we've added open telemetry spans, right? So what we've done here is we're, we're trying to time the, uh, you're trying to make a trace for the count words method. So we create a new trace or a new span if you like, uh, to to count and uh, to to essentially act as a as a way to track the performance of that count words method, and then when the method ends, obviously we then know how long that method's taken, which is very important for performance monitoring. But we can also get the count words, you know, how many words were actually counted. We can get that information and add that to our span, right? So we can get some quite good information and, and enrich our performance monitoring code with that. Now, we haven't had to make any code changes to our original application to make this happen. We can do all of this with the OpenTelemetry extension we've written here. Now, it's worth mentioning that OpenTelemetry and, in fact, Elastic APM both use this library called ByteBuddy to get the instrumentation done. So now we've, we've got our original application, the simple Java application. We've written an extension for OpenTelemetry. Next up, we want to get it deployed. Now, what I've done for you here in this GitHub repository is I've created a, a start to finish Docker file that will do all the work. It will build the simple Java app. It will build the extension and then it will run it with the extension. So you can see all of this in the Docker file here. We build the uh, simple Java app, we build the extension, and then we run our code here using start.sh. You'll notice in start.sh, we actually use the OpenTelemetry Java agent. We define the URL and the secret key, which we get from uh, Elastic APM over here. And then we also define this extensions jar file, which is very important. This is how we actually bring our instrumentation in. And once we've done all of that, we can run it. So let's have a little look here with the correct secret key and URL, as you can see here. And uh, if we type something in here, we can see the instrumentation is working because you can see this entering method log, file, log line here, which is something that I added in. And then you can see in here in the Elastic APM console that we should get some transactions. Now, this might take a little while to come through. There we go, my span, brilliant. So that extension has worked. So Give the, uh, give the YouTube video a like and go in the comments and you should be able to find the GitHub repository that was used in this example. And uh, happy coding, folks.